Hey everybody, so today we are going to have a quick video. We're gonna put our super sleuth hat on and we're going to talk about how you can potentially catch someone in the act of using your data without you realizing it. All right, so this is not going to work for everyone. There are certain situations where this will work. So if this sounds interesting to you, keep on watching. All right, so the situation where this is likely to work, you have to remember, uh, a lot of the work that I've done in my past is dealing with uh, control vocabularies or information that you could scrape from the web or from content, but you shouldn't because there are licenses involved where you have to make sure you are allowed to use the data. The reason for this is in a lot of content, the abstract, and the subject indexing is the most proprietary information because a lot of human capital and human brain power has to go into how that should function, what should be classified as what, and how to summarize what that content is about. But a lot of people on the internet don't feel like that should be the case, so they go and take it. So a little trick that I have found is first, people don't own words. I can't own the word cat. But what I can own is how the conceptual thing of cat is defined and how I define that according to the content that it tags. And this content can be movies, it could be images, it could be scholarly content, it could be blog posts, whatever it is. I put some thought into how I'm going to apply cat to something. Now, there are certain platforms like Twitter that publicly tell their users that people can use that data. Now it's anonymized, so that's okay. So in those situations, you kind of know what you're getting into. But if you're somebody that owns your own blog or you do have content that you make for sale and you don't want people using your data without your permission, first of all, make sure you have good Creative Commons and other licensing paraphernalia around your websites to make sure that people know what they're allowed to do. But one thing I have learned is silly words that don't exist in the real world are really handy to have in your vocabulary and in your metadata. So the reason for this is if that concept does not exist anywhere else in the, in the web, if you make it part of your metadata, if they grab your data without your permission, they're going to use that silly word. So an example of this is piano, violin, all one word doesn't exist. If you go and you Google it, it's just garbage. So if I put that into my control vocabulary, or if I use that in my tags and my abstracts in my content, then I mysteriously find it somewhere else. That tells me that person is either using someone else that's taking my data without permission, or they themselves are using my data without permission. Again, this does not always mean ill intentions. So make sure you reach out to them first and find out, like, do they actually know they shouldn't be using that data? But if they are doing it for malicious purposes or they don't care about your intellectual property, that's where making sure that you had that licensing paraphernalia all over your uh, website is helpful because then you can point them to that and say, no, actually, legally, you're not allowed to use this. And then you can take proper precautions for it. But this is one way that you can unearth if people are using your data without your permission. This also takes some time, so don't expect the uh, silly word to just start showing up across the internet uh, within days, sometimes that does happen, but I would give it two to three months and periodically do just random Google searches or go to uh, the parties that you suspect are taking your data uh, and, and look for that. Uh, machine learning models are also trained on a lot of this data, so sometimes you can kind of find that out um, if you are using their recommendations. If you type in your silly word and it actually gives you recommendations for it, that could be a potential way to, to find out if they are using your data without permission. So all of this is to unearth where there might be a leak so that you can then follow up. And again, make sure you're respectful about this because not everyone realizes what copywriting does to content and what that means for metadata. A lot of people don't realize that Maybe their third party they're getting data from is using it incorrectly. So be patient, but this is one way you can identify it and then take action. All right, so I hope that little tidbit helps you. 
I hope this has been a little bit of a fun video. And this is the kickoff to our Halloween week. So stay tuned for some other fun content. All right, so with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.